I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, I'm going to show you how to get any radio running OpenTX. So your Tyrannus, your Horus, your QX7, well, heck, even a FlySky radio if you've hacked OpenTX onto it. How to get audible alerts working on those radios. In other words, like your voltage gets too low and your radio goes, yo, your battery's about to crap out. Yeah, like that. Stay tuned. If you've watched my channel long enough, you know that I like to fly with telemetry on my quadcopters. And it's not just because now with telemetry, we can do Lua scripts and we can change PIDs and rates and video transmitter settings using telemetry. Yeah, if you needed a reason to get telemetry working, <laughs> that's it. But I like telemetry even before that stuff existed. And the reason is, people say, well, why do you need telemetry? We've got OSDs, right? Your OSD will give you down in the lower right hand, there you go, your voltage, your whatever you need, right? So why do we need telemetry? And there's some truth to that. But the reason I like telemetry is because a lot of times when I'm flying, I'm ripping balls. So, sorry about that. A lot of times I'm too busy flying to look down at the OSD and check what the battery voltage is, especially because the time when the battery voltage is the lowest is when you're punching the throttle and you may be, you may be at, you know, 14.9 volts and that's a fine voltage to be flying at, but then you hit the throttle real hard and suddenly you're at 13.6 volts and that's not such a good voltage to be at, but you're so busy jamming that throttle and flying real fast that you, you're not looking at the OSD. So an audible alert from the radio is great. And there are simple ways, you can just in the Tyrannus' basic telemetry setup, get it to warn you when your voltage is low. But, oh no, that's not for me. I'm gonna show you how to do something much cooler and much more useful, and that is to get the Tyrannus to read out the voltage. So in other words, when your voltage goes below a certain threshold, it'll say 13.6 volts or whatever. And that way you'll know just how much you're sagging and where you're at and when it's getting close to time to land. And in the context of doing that, I'm just going to show you how to set up all kinds of audible alerts with your Tyrannus. Let's get into it. And the basic setup we can do is this. Number one, you're going to need telemetry. So if you haven't got telemetry working, obviously you're not going to be able to do anything in response to your, your low voltage, right? And you can see I've got a built-in alarm for low, low RSSI, but there's no built-in alarm for low voltage. We've got to set that up ourselves. The first thing we need to do is set up a logical switch that will become true when the voltage goes below a certain threshold. Logical switches, you should think, they call them logical switches because they're kind of like a switch you can flip. But think of them, if you're into computer programming, they're basically a Boolean test. It's a logical test that basically says, if this condition is true, then the switch will become active. If this condition is not true, then the switch will be inactive. And you can sort of build these and chain these together with, with Boolean logic. Again, if you're a computer programmer, this is very natural for you. But if you're not a computer programmer, you're probably not used to thinking in the sort of structured way about logic and decision making that computer programmers are used to. Let me walk you through the example. Maybe it'll start to make some sense. So I'm just going to use logical switch 06 here because I'll just, I'm going to leave a blank line here for you guys. And I'm going to hit enter. And we're going to start with the function. And the function is going to be a is less than x. Okay. So this switch is going to become true when something is less than something else. What is it going to become true? The value that we're going to be looking at is, let me hold down the enter key, and I'm going to pick the telemetry section here. So these are all the things we could be looking at to make this switch become true or active. Uh, and in this case, we're going to be looking at a telemetry value. And the telemetry value I'm going to look at is the one that is holding battery voltage, and that's going to be VFAS. VFAS is where your flight controller, beta flight or clean flight, reports the battery voltage back to the Tyrannus. So when VFAS is less than a certain value, this switch will become true. Well, what value is that going to be? That's this parameter here. And I'm going to set that to the parameter that I want to trigger the audible alert. So since I'm running 4S, Let's just say that when my battery goes below, let's say 14.0 volts, I will get an audible alert. Now that's actually all you need to do to make the very, very simplest form of 
logical switch, and audible alert. Let me show you how we're going to set up the actual audible alert part of this. To do that, I'm going to go to, let me ex exit out of there. So switch LO6 is going to be true when VFAS is less than 14 volts. Now, I'm going to go back to the hello, oh, page. Thank you. I'm going to go back to the special functions page. I'm going to pick a special function. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the condition that will cause this special function to activate. And again, I'm going to go here. I'm going to hold down the Enter key to bring up this menu. I'm going to go to Logical Switches, and we're working with LO6. When LO6 becomes active, we are going to play a track. No, no, sorry, not a track. Play a value. The difference between those is that play track plays one of the audio tracks on your SD cards. You know those wave files you've got? If you installed the Amber Sound Pack, for example, it was just a bunch of wave files and it says things like, you know, uh, flaps active, angle mode, etc. Right? So play uh, sound will actually, or play, or play track will play one of those audio files. Play value will read out the actual value. So if it's 14 volts, the trans will say 14 volts. And that's what we want to do because I don't just want to hear battery low. That's not as useful to me as hearing 13.6 volts and knowing exactly what the battery value is. So we're going to play value. And the value that we're going to play is, again, I'll hold down the enter key. I'll go down to the telemetry section. And the value that we're going to play is, of course, VFAS. Okay, and we're going to play that value one time. You can cause it to repeat multiple times or for um, rather for, for a certain length of time. Playing an audio file for a certain length of time is useful if the audio file is something like a siren or some sound that you would just repeat for a certain length of time. But as for play a value, I just want to hear one time 13.6 volts or whatever my, my battery voltage is and then leave it alone. Now I've got a quadcopter here and I've got a battery here and I really want to demonstrate to you how this works in flight. I could just take a little 2S battery <laughs> plugged into an adapter and then I would get a low voltage alarm, but that's not how it really works. How it works when you're flying is you raise the throttle, the voltage sags, the battery changes voltage. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this smoke stopper for safety, right? But also because with a smoke stopper, when you draw current through it, the voltage will drop. And what that means is I can raise the throttle on the Tyrannus and the voltage from the battery will drop in a very sort of predictable manner. And that'll let me get a fairly realistic response from this copter. Did you notice when I first plugged the quadcopter in, what did the Tyrannus do? Let me plug it in again and listen. Zero there you go. Did you hear that zero volts alarm? So it's actually working. When the battery voltage goes below the threshold, we get a warning. I read, it read the voltage. We already know it's working. But why did the Tyrannus say zero volts? And the reason is that there's a very short period of time when you first plug the quadcopter in where telemetry doesn't have a reading and it shows up as zero volts and the Tyrannus reads out zero volts. I'm going to show you how to fix that a little later in the video. But for now, let's go ahead and just demonstrate that what we've got going on here is working. So here we are looking at the radio and I'm going to take us over to the telemetry screen. Actually, I want to take us to the logical switches screen. And what I want you to see is, oh, there we go. What I want you to see is that as the logical switch becomes true, it will become bold. And that will, that's a good way for troubleshooting logical switches. They will become bold when they are active. So let's watch. I'm going to arm the quad. Oh, hang on. I'm just going to make a little bit of a mess here. Okay, so now the motors are idling, and as I raise the throttle, we should see LO6 go bold and become true as the voltage drops. 13.9 volts. There we go. See, it worked. Now it's gone back to being false. 13.9 now we've got the situation that when the voltage goes below our target value, we read it out. But what about that annoying zero volts warning? Well, there's a very simple way to try to deal with that. And the way to deal with that is by combining logical switches into a conditional statement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use LO7 and I'm going to say 
a is greater than x, and the value I'm going to be looking at is, once again, VFAS. And VFAS, this switch is going to be true when VFAS is greater than 0 volts. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the AND condition here on LO6. So if we scrolled over to here, notice that it says up at the top, AND switch. What this means is that anything I put in that column, both of the conditions have to be true in order for this switch to become true. And this is actually really powerful. It lets you combine these things in really infinite ways. Here's how we're going to do it this time. In the AND switch column for LO6, we're going to choose the logical switch. LO7. And what that means is that LO6 will only become true when this condition is met, when VFAS is less than 14 volts, and this condition is met, VFAS is greater than 0 volts. So the problem that we've got is when we first plug the battery in, VFAS is 0 volts for just a fraction of a second before we get our true reading, and that's causing a false readout that we don't want to hear. So we just say, hey, look, during that when that condition is true, don't do anything. And this is a really easy one because there's a very specific condition that is causing the false readout. VFAS is reading zero volts. And then we just say, okay, well, whenever VFAS is zero volts, don't do that. But what if it was something more wide ranging? For example, I'm not going to demonstrate this to you. Take my word for it. You also get the same false reading when you lose and regain telemetry for any reason. And that's also annoying. And here's how I get rid of that. We're going to add another logical switch here, and this one is going to be true when A is greater than X, and the value we're going to look at is a telemetry value, but this time it's not going to be VFAS, it's going to be RSSI. And this switch will be true when RSSI is greater than 0 dB. And the point of this logical switch is to prevent the voltage readout from occurring whenever we have lost our, con our link. So that will prevent the other kind of false readout that can occur to keep the Tyrannus from reading out these values when we don't want it to. So here we're looking at my actual setup that I have on my Tyrannus that I fly with. And I want to demonstrate to you the two other parameters that are involved with logical switches. And they are delay, which you can see up here is this is the delay column right here, and min duration, which is the column right here. Min duration is the minimum amount of time that the switch will stay true. So if the switch gets triggered and then the triggering condition stops being true, the switch will stay on for at least this amount of time. And you can see that I've got that set at 10 seconds. And the reason for that is that I don't want the voltage readout being read out continuously. I just want to hear it once and then 10 seconds later I'll hear it again. If we're still below that, but I don't want it to just keep saying 13.9, 13.9, 13.9, 13.9, .9, I got it. You can set that to basically the minimum amount of time you want it to read out the value again, no faster than that. The other one is the delay parameter. And the delay parameter means that the condition must be true for at least this length of time before the switch will actually become true. And I've got that set to 0.2 seconds. And what that means is that the voltage has to go below the threshold for at least 0.2 seconds before the switch triggers it. So if we get just a very brief dip down below there and it comes back up again, I'm not going to trigger. It's not going to read it out to me. You can see that I've also got a delay here on the RSSI. The RSSI has to be z greater than 0 dB for 5 seconds. Basically, it means that the copter has to be plugged in for at least 5 seconds before this whole thing starts to become active. I don't want any readouts of voltage when I first plug the copter in for any reason because there's often a lot of spurious data right there when you first plug in. So let me demonstrate to you how this is going to work. And I want you to watch the voltage here. So you can see here we're at 15 volts, and I'm going to arm the quad, and I'm going to try to drop it below 14.4 volts. And when it goes below 14.4 volts for at least 0.2 seconds, it'll read out. It will not read out again for at least 10 seconds, no matter what I do. So see now, even though it's gone below 14.4 volts, it didn't read out again because it hadn't been 10 seconds yet. Now it should. So now it's above 
And if I knock it down below again, see it didn't read out again, hasn't been 10 seconds yet. Each time 10 seconds go by and it goes back below 14.4, 14 .3. it reads out. Let it go back above. There you go. Now, if you're really picky, you may be able to find some disadvantages to this. The main disadvantage, I think, is that if you go below the threshold, 14.4 volts, and you just stay there, you'll get a readout, but <laughs> it won't give you another readout until the, the switch won't get cleared until you, it goes back above the threshold again. And that means if you're just killing your battery down below 14.4, it just needs to be your warning that you've gone below and how far below you've gone and you need to back off. You certainly could modify the switch though to read out some kind of other thing when it goes above 14.4 or to keep reading out as it's below the threshold in a certain amount of time. There's various ways you could go about that. But that's all we're going to do here for now. I do want to let you guys know that there's a great website called OpenTX University that even I refer to when I'm doing this stuff just to make sure I remember how all this works. And if you want the, it's really the ultimate site for documentation about OpenTX. All of this stuff is in there. I'm going to put a link to it down in the video description. Definitely go check that out if, out if you want a reference for OpenTX. But that's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching and happy flying.